So speak, while we're on the subject of, of uh, Nikki, I believe he said in his interview to the police when they came up to the prison to talk with him that he wondered whether some of the letters that he was receiving, if maybe that one was uh, Nicole Kessinger. Uh, did he did he elaborate on that yeah, any he, yeah. more? He did. He he would talk about wondering if she was writing to him like in a code or something. And he had uh, one person that was writing him from Kauai. And he doesn't know who she was or how she got interested in him. But she would write him letters and, and write things on postcards that was just like they knew each other almost. And she would talk about I don't know what this has to do with anything, but she would talk about banana bread a lot, which banana bread is kind of a staple in Hawaii. You know, I, I don't know why that was a big issue for him. And, and she kept writing about that, about the banana bread. So he was wondering if it was a code for something, if she wrote to him in a code. And um, her name was um, Laurel, I think it was her name. I, I saw a couple of the postcards that he had written or she had written him. Um, but he was always wondering if she's going to contact him, if she'll, how she still feels about him and if she will uh, eventually show up in his life, you know? Yeah. Delusional, I think. Somewhat. Yeah. Now, did he say how many people he had writing him while he's been in prison? Oh my, he's got, he has a fan base. I'm going to tell you, he was getting, at one point he was getting dozens of letters a day and that has backed off some but he he does get a lot of mail and it's funny because i started realizing he is so um regimented with the way he does things that he was calling me on certain days so if he didn't get a hold of me he wouldn't try the next day he had to wait until the next appointed time to call me and not that we agreed any certain day because we didn't. He could call whenever he wanted to. Uh, but he has so many people that he was calling and so many people that he is writing to that he has to schedule it out. Who he writes today and who he calls today. Uh, just bizarre that he, he cares so much about what people think of him that the fact that he's got this fan base is really important to him. That he, you know, he has these women that love him and um, another set of women that just minister to him and and um, basically kind of a girlfriend that he's got. And, um, has he had uh, other women who <laughs> are potential love interests come and see him? There's one that seems to have a, a real interest in him i've asked her um point blank you know um, do you love him are you in love with him and she will deny it but she sees him weekly and she comes to his defense um like a mother would come to her little child's defense or like uh you know like you'd come to your husband's defense so uh i guess only what what's she Her defending? Him, no. What's she defending him about? I mean, he's pled guilty. He says he's, I mean, he's told the police, he's told the court, he's told you in letters that he killed everybody. What what could she possibly defend him? Like just saying he's a he's not as a, the monster that everybody makes him out to be. Exactly, and she was very upset with me that I uh, put the letters in my book, even though he wrote them, and I have a, I have a document from him that he sent kind of out of the blue in July that says um, Cheryl and Cato has my permission to write or to use any and all correspondence that I have sent to her for the purpose of writing the book. And so, but this girl is just, you know, she just gets so angry with me that I basically opened up the truth and why did I do that to him? And now he's in such a horrible state. He's having so much, you know, problems with this. And um, I, it's not normal to me to defend someone like that when you know what he's done. Who was able to defend 
Shanann and the girls, you know, against him. So I don't think he has a right to ask yeah. for me to defend him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. And I'm assuming you have all the original letters. You have the letters that say inmate mail from the, the prison, the, the way they normally come. Yes. Uh, so if anybody doubts that you had anything, you could produce everything. Is that right? I did, and I gave it. Uh, I gave Daily Mail the one letter, and then I allowed them to look at the other letters when they were here. I also am taking the letters and putting them into a notebook under clear sleeves. And uh, as I do book signings, if people would like to look at the letters, they are welcome to do that. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I I certainly would like to. Uh, you know, uh, talk to the guy. I mean, just my curiosity is criminal defense attorney. Um, and mm -hmm. just kind of generally my, my experience with clients over the years, it's always curious to see what makes somebody tick. And was it just a complete aberration, a one time somebody loses their stuff, so to speak, or was really this mm -hmm. person just not wired right? And I think that's the intriguing thing is we, you know, you can hear about the Charles Mansons and uh, the Bundys and, you know, you kind of like, there's just so many of them. It's like, okay, there, you could see it happening. That's just pure evil. And then you see a guy that snaps once, mm -hmm. you know, like, it was it only once. Was there something else? Maybe he got away with, you know, you like, you, you just don't know. Um, and that's, mm. I think the curiosity thing is, is, um, what makes this guy tick? Because, you know, what does a murderer look right. like? Does he look like a Ted Bundy that is, you know, went to law school, well, you know, uh, spoken, educated, so to speak? Right. Or is it the Charles Manson guy? You know, uh, what do they look like? Mm -hmm. You can't just say, oh, that one person is going right. to kill or that one is not. Um, so, 